Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's brood. efforts of Sidney Schiffbane, Papa and his partner Sam find themselves in the business of making uniforms. Mama doesn't visit the office very often, but here she is today, just entering Sidney's new and extremely spacious office. Hello, Sidney. Hello, Mrs. Bloom. Welcome to the new offices. Now, Sidney, don't be so informal. Call me Ma. Okay, Ma. I was kind of saving that until after Sally and I were married. That's all right, Sidney. You start calling me Mama right away. Well, what do you think of the place? Mm, it's elegant. And these are the swellest offices in New York. Oh, it's beautiful, just like a moving picture. It's so beautiful that with an office like this, you should have some other place to do your work in. <laughs> it's a shame to muss up a lovely place like this. Yeah, this is all modernistic furniture, the latest thing. Mm, that's a beautiful desk. That's not a desk, Ma. That's a chair. A chair, a desk, it's beautiful. Uh, but how can you sit down in it? Well, you sit down here, look. Yeah, this way. Yeah, but you sleep off. I know it's not very comfortable, but that's the style. And look, isn't this a lovely filing cabinet? Filing cabinet? Yeah, you keep your files in here. In a beautiful office like this, why must you have tools? No, no, not that kind of files, Ma. Paper files. Uh, paper files are something new to me. Uh, what time is it, Sidney? Uh, ten minutes to five. Where's Pop and Sam? Well, they're downstairs fooling around with the knee pants department. Honest, Ma, I can't figure those two guys out. Here I put them in a swell business making uniforms where they get a chance to clean up millions. And most of the time they're downstairs monkeying with knee pants. I've been trying to get them to give up the knee pants business, but that's the only thing they won't stand for. Listen, Sidney, one week ago you ordered thousands of dollars worth of machinery. You rented extra floors. Papa was going to kill you, but I talked him into giving you a chance. Yeah, I know, Now but... you got to give Papa a chance. He'll stand for anything. No one's got a heart like Papa. But you can even turn a voim on the wrong side. And when you try to take Papa out of the knee pants business, you're taking our baby away from candy. Well, what does he like about the knee pants business? Call it a pet. Call it what you please. He likes it. Sue him. Well, I did my best. If he wants to waste time on it, there's nothing I can do. Uh, Sidney, Sarah's calling for you? Yeah, she ought to be here any minute. Ah, uh, maybe you'll come to supper, huh? They're having a spell dinner. Well, it's all right with me if Sally wants to. Sally wants to, all right. So she's still my daughter. And if I say she'll want to come home to dinner, she'll have to want to. Now, we'll come to dinner, then, if you make it a little late. I gotta go out and see a fella, and I'm just waiting for Sally to come here so I can see her before I go. What do you need from Sally? Well, nothing exactly. Then you go ahead, and we'll wait here for you. All right, I'll only be about ten minutes. Hello, Sidney. Hello. Hello, Ma. Hello, Yvette. What's Sidney rushing about? Sidney's a big businessman now. He's got no time to to be saying hello. He's very busy. Well, what's he very busy about? I don't know. When you're a big businessman, you don't tell. You just go around being very busy. There's Sidney. He just went out. I've got to find him. He said he'd be back in a minute. What should I tell him? What? He should tell him I'm sorry I ever saw him. What kind of talk is that? Have you lost your mind? Yes. Yes, I've lost my mind. You're talking in riddles. And you're talking in riddles. It costs nothing. But when you're doing business in riddles, that's something else again. Well, what has Sidney done? Why are you always picking on the boy, Papa? Uh, Becky, you don't understand. Why not? I understand riddles, too. For 20 years, I was in the knee pants business. I was happy. And one day, somebody opened up the door and in blew Sidney. And the first thing I know, I'm a uniform manufacturer. Isn't he getting orders? Uh, don't ask me. Orders, mothers. 
I've got to keep busy in the knee pants business so I can make enough money for him to spend in the uniform factory. Well, what are you so mad about now? What? What, she asks me. For four days, I haven't been in the uniform factory, and Sam is on the road selling, so he hasn't been in there either. Yeah. A half an hour ago, I accidentally walked into the uniform department, and what do you think I found? Tell me. I found that Sydney had just made up 1,328 beautiful uniforms. Isn't that fine? It's delicious. Well, what are you complaining about? Wait a minute. I haven't told you yet. Well, tell me then. 1,328 beautiful uniforms of expensive goods. With the finest buttons and such workmanship you've never seen in your whole life. Uh huh, uh huh. Didn't I tell you? Sydney's a natural uniform. Mama, man. let me finish or I'll go crazy. Mama, every uniform is bright red. Bright red? Bright red? Well, who are they for? Who can they be for? Who has got bright red soldiers? In Russia, they got bright red soldiers. Russia. Russia don't buy uniforms from us. Even Sydney hasn't ever been to Russia. What can the reason be? Why did he make bright red uniforms? The only reason I can figure out. Last week, Sydney told me he bought a job lot of goods for uniforms at 25 cents on the dollar. But how could I guess it was red? Listen, Papa, maybe reds are a good color for soldier uniforms. It won't show blood. It's an invention. Uh, here's the bill, Mama. Take a look at it. Take a good look. 6,000 yards at 15 cents a yard, $900. Labor, buttons, cutting, incidentals, at least $3 a uniform. That's $3,900. Add it up and you get $4,800 Sydney has spent. And what have we got for it? What have we got for it? They must Red be uniforms. Reason, Papa. Even Sydney wouldn't do it. Otherwise, maybe they're samples. 1,300 samples? All red? Oh, I know what they are. They're moving picture ushers uniforms. Moving picture ushers? What theater has got 1,300 ushers? Today, they're building pretty big theaters. Oh, hey, Becky, there's no use. Even if they are building big theaters, still, 1,300 ushers, no theaters got. You can't tell, Jake. Maybe in the new style theaters, they're going to make the customers wear uniforms. Oh, hey, Becky, you're talking nonsense. Sure, sure, I'm talking nonsense. Don't you know why? No, no. I'm no. talking nonsense to you, Jake, so you won't get appleplexy worrying to yourself. What do you want me to do, Mama? Put on a red uniform and dance for you. I want you should not get excited till Sidney comes back. He said he'd be back in a few minutes. And when he comes back, he'll tell you what he wants red uniforms for. When he comes back, I'm going to put on one of the red uniforms and I'm going to kill him. I'll make him wear one of the red uniforms too and then the blood won't show. Don't talk about killing, Papa. Are you a murderess? Murderer, Ma, not murderer. Yeah, yeah, darling, you're right. The murderess is the wife of a murderer. Jake! Don't make me a murderess. Forty-eight hundred dollars. Forty-eight hundred dollars he throws away, and I and I can't even kill him. Wait <laughs> till you hear what Sydney says. There are two sides, even to our red uniform. Hello, folks. Where's Sydney? Do me a favor, please. Don't ask about Sydney. Uh, Sarah, take yet in the other room. Your papa's feeling a little blood toasty. Red uniforms. Red uniforms. Be careful, Jake. <laughs> You'll break your blood vestibules. Blood vessels, Mom. Go into the other room, I tell you. But I want it. Oh, I want Please, it. girls, do as Papa says, eh? All right. Come on, Yetta. Okay. Uh, where is Sydney? Where is Sydney? If he's coming back, why doesn't he come back? He can't come back before he gets here, can he? He could hurry, couldn't he? Besides, whenever Sydney is away, I'm worried. I don't know what he's doing, but I know it's going to cost me money. Papa, a million times I've asked you, give the boy a chance. Everybody knows a son-in-law costs you money. It's a luxury, like Grand Opera. Grand Opera? I can walk out on Grand Opera, but who can walk out on Sydney? Who's talking about me? Oh, sit down, Sydney, sit down. We've got to have a little talk. No, I'm <laughs> sorry, Dad, I'm busy. I haven't got time to sit down and talk. You'll sit down. I'm asking you for the last uh, time. Sit down, Sydney. I tell you, I'm very busy. Papa wants to have a confidence. Yeah, well, all right. Just for a minute, though. Sydney, before I choke you to death, tell me, what are the red uniforms for? Oh, the red uniforms. Yes, the red uniforms. Tell me quick. Ah, oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? You never saw anything like those uniforms. Did you see them, Ma? No, but uh, Papa told me about them. Boy, they're the stuff. And nobody but me would ever make up that color goods in the uniforms. I'll bet if you'd show them to anybody in the world, they'd laugh themselves to death. Yeah, Papa saw them and he didn't laugh. Not even one chuckle. And that certainly was a crazy idea of mine, wasn't it? Now that you've got them, what are you going to do with them, Sidney? Nothing. Nothing? You're going to do nothing with them? Nothing at all. I'm dying. Jake, don't die. It's very dangerous. Well, there's nothing you can do with them. They're perfect the way they are. Besides, the guy's crazy about them. Sidney, what guy? The guy who ordered them. I just took him over a sample and he gave me a check. $11 a piece net. Here you are, Dad. Certified check for $14,600 even. I gave him eight bucks off for cash. But, you, you sold him? Sure, I sold him. 
Who would buy a red uniform? I've been trying to tell you they're a special order for the presidential guard of some South American country. And that's a sweet profit, Pop. About $8,000. But, but uh, look, if he likes them so well, why didn't you charge him $12 apiece? It's such a beautiful color, red. I didn't <laughs> yes. want to do that on account of the rest of the business. Oh, the red is he got more soldiers? Oh, about ten or 12000 more. Ten or twelve, And they've all got to have uniforms? Three apiece. Two for drill and one for dress uniforms. When Sidney gets to talking with him, they'll have six uniforms apiece. I'm figuring with the guy now for a price on 250,000 uniforms. 250,000? <laughs> Say, tell me, how long has this uniform business been going on? They've always worn uniforms, by the millions. Yeah, and you've been making knee pants, Papa. Two hundred and fifty thousand uniforms. Mm. <laughs> you could give it to him different colors, huh? Maybe he'd like an assortment. And if I can sell him, I can sell all those other South American countries. Yeah, say, say, give me a pencil on a piece of paper. Quick, quick, quick. Papa, about your figuring. Um, Sydney. How many soldiers did you say there are in South America? Oh, a million, anyhow. A million? Six uniforms? Six million uniforms at the be? <laughs> say, it's only seven dollars a piece profit. I gotta it? go back and see this guy now. I'm taking him to dinner and he's bringing along the Minister of War. They make war with our preacher. No, that's just his title. Anyhow, I'm taking him to dinner. Maybe they'd like to come up to the house for dinner. Oh, uh, Sydney, Sydney, have you got enough money to take them to dinner? Oh, that's right. Hey, you better give me a couple of hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars for dinner? Sydney, what you going to have for dinner, goldfish? No, but I don't want to run short. Sydney, take a hundred and fifty dollars. If voice comes to voice, you can do without toothpaste. No, I'll go in and tell Sally. Uh, Pop, you get me the check ready, huh? <laughs> Papa, hey, yeah. but what can they eat for a hundred and fifty dollars, even if they didn't have lunch? Mama, I'm going to make it two hundred. Sydney knows what he's doing. <laughs> uh-huh. You, uh... You think Sidney's a smart fella, huh? A smart fella? A smart... Sure he's a smart fella. <laughs> Take a look at this check, Mama. Maybe he's a lucky fella. No, nah, no, nah, it's better to be smart. Mm, when you're lucky, you don't have to be smart. Ah, Mama, you're, you're talking through your head. I know what I'm talking about, Papa. Two fellas are standing by a river. The smart fella, he don't fall in. The lucky fella, he falls in. And he comes up with a fish in one hand and a rowboat in the other. Look at Christopher Columbus. Who knows better or not he was smart? He takes a boat and he starts sailing. So what? So he was lucky. And he found a country called the United States. Which was so lucky that 250 years later, you made $9,000 profit on red uniforms. Mm-hmm.